Morning, everybody. It's very early. Well, it is for me anyway. Um, what is it? Uh, half past six, I think it is. Just waiting for me, mate, Roy. Um, what are we doing? Another one of them garfy, impulsive things, but uh, I know it's the right thing to do. It's what I've been thinking about for a while. But we're, uh, we're going to Leeds from Dudley. Uh, good old drive. Uh, my friend Roy has uh, volunteered to uh, go up in his van, because he's got a tow bar, to save me taking Tess. Just got me a cup of tea. Just waiting for him to turn up now. Feel it's me, I'll, uh, I'll uh, introduce you to me, mate Roy, a good friend. One of my best friends. I've got a few. <laughs> uh, about an handful. Uh, anyway, we're going up to Leeds to get a transverse motorcycle trailer. And it's it's for a scooter that I've purchased for me and Kaz. So when we're out in the motorhome, we can use this scooter uh, to get ourselves about, um, which is a good idea. And it's for Europe mostly. But because we go to Weymouth on Saturday, what is it today, Thursday? Uh, because we go to Weymouth on Saturday, I thought it'd be a great idea if we uh, could uh, get the insurance and road tax sorted out um, a bit beforehand and use it, uh, use it in um, Weymouth. So uh, here we are. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll do a bit of uh, filming on the way up and when I get there I'll show you where I've got it from the name of the company and stuff tell you how much I paid I'll even ask him if there's a discount for you um, for anybody who watches uh, our YouTube channel and stuff so if he gives us a code or anything we haven't got a discount, we've paid full rate uh, but it has to be brought I've got to tow that uh, scooter about and we'll introduce you to the scooter as and when we get it um, so, exciting times. Seen a bit. No Cassie. Well, this is my buddy Roy. Say hello, Roy. Hello, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Garth. And he's, he's my buddy, Garth. He, and he's just got me to Armitage for the uh, for the uh, transverse uh, trailer. So we're there. We're going to go in the office now and see if they uh, they want us to put them on YouTube and see if we can get a discount for the uh, for you viewers. In a way, uh, we're going to have a nose. We'll be back in touch in a bit, all right? Bye. Bye. Say, say bye, Roy. Bye, Roy. Hey, guys. Well, we've just arrived at Armitage, and you can see the sign in the background there. I've got Wayne with me as the managing director. Hi. Say, say hello, Wayne. Hello. And obviously, you guys know our Roy who's brought me up here. Yeah. Right. Uh, Wayne's going to uh, give us a little tour around this trailer now. Uh, I'm going to do a, do the filming the other way around in a minute, but there you go. So uh, we'll uh, have a listen to see what Wayne's got and give us a demonstration. There you go, Wayne. Right. Show Thanks us what's what. You talk about storage solutions for it, first of all. If you remove this post, which is an M12 bolt here, take the bolt out, give the post a wiggle, that removes. Then, if you just basically get the end, it will stand on its end without the casters, just rest on the board, and the tailpiece here. Yeah. Now, as you've purchased the caster system also, what that enables us to do is to put the brake on sideways first before putting it in. Yeah. Release the bolt here. That's going to slot in. So then when you tip it up on its end, yep. you've got your brake a little bit like a, a, a shopping trolley, or a bit worse, and you just kick it off and then you can wheel it wheel around. It for storage, yeah. Spaces, through gateways, yep. wherever you need to put it. Yeah. With a low loader, you can't really get it wrong because there's a short side and a long side. Yeah, so yeah. Only going one way. Yeah, yeah. Got that. Okay, so that's your storage. Yeah. Now, maintenance on an unbrake trailer is pretty minimal, got to be said. So, your little handbook that you get is going to tell you in there to check your wheel nut torque settings and your bearings at 50 mile. Most people do a lot more than that just leaving here, so all I say before you use it again. Then 500 mile, then every 5,000 mile yep. on yearly, whichever comes first. If you replace a wheel or a bearing, you start that process again. 50, 500, 5,000, 5,000 or yearly. Now, the wheel up torque settings, you'll notice we put wheel check indicators on. 
Yep, yeah, got you that. You don't really have to check that at them stories unless you see one of those checkpoints move that you know when nuts come loose. Yep. Yeah. And your torque settings then in your handbook to re them back up. Yep, yeah, understand. Um, as far as checking the bearings, they've got tape roller bearings, so the wheel bed in, it's never been on the road. And that's why the wheel eventually come a little bit loose. So all you're simply doing is grabbing hold of the wheel and just checking for a little bit of play. Yeah. A tiny bit of play when it's cold is normal. When the bearings are heated up, there should be no play at all. Okay. So once you get a bit of play, as it says in your handbook, remove the hook cap, split pin castle nut, yeah. remove the split pin. Usually the next turn of the castle nut takes up the slack. But it's very important you don't over tighten the tape of all the bearings. Yeah, otherwise it's going to get warm, yeah. It's, it's going to get warm, it's going yeah. to throw the pins out, burst things, etc. Yeah. So, must be freely, but with no play. Okay. Just finding that fine line. As far as maintenance goes, that's it. Okay. Uh, apart from, there is a grease nip on the hooks here for yearly greasing. So, it's nice and easy. The bearings out, clean them up, put them back in, and then just pump on the yep. grease back through with the hook cap on. Yep. Okay. Right, so. That's your maintenance side of it. Set up. So the first time you get this trailer, we're going to have to adjust and tweak it up to suit your particular scooter, stroke, motorbike, whatever the case may be. Yep. This particular trailer will take up to 225 kilos of bike uh, based on a 350 kilogram gross unit. So the first thing we have to do is set the bike up itself. You've got a loading ramp here, just release the hand wheels, two slotted arms. I won't bother taking it off. No, that's fine. But they just slot into the ends here. Yep. Literally slot it in. The post is so tall, the idea behind that is you slide it to the very top. Most bikes, yes. all, and ones with windscreens don't, but should pass underneath. Yes. If, if so, you just take it off and then put it back down. If there's someone there to pass you in, yeah, the whole yeah. idea is trying to make it a one-man load. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, use the tick over of the bike. So, you've got punch and brake control here. If yeah. you don't have punch and brake control, push it. Yeah. Uh, take it up. While you're holding the bike here, then you can reach across to this. That's going to drop on the seat. Yep. Support the bike while you get strapped in place. Yep, yep. But before we do all that, like I said, we do need to tweak it up a little bit. So the first thing, you'll need a bit of assistance, someone holding the bike, where you just stand back a little bit, and you want to centralise the bike. Oh, okay. How we centralise the bike is by moving the front wheel loop. Yep. Four 13mm bolts, 13mm spanner, sorry, 8mm bolts, and that will slide up and down on the track to get your bike centralised. Yeah, yeah. Once you've got your bike centralised, and that's your stop every that's time. That's it, yeah. Set then, innit? Pretty much, but... The important piece now is this. Yes. And it's extremely important that you get this in the correct place. So again, the bolt down here that helps you remove it for storage. Yep. Also allows you to adjust it oh, when you need it. Up and down. Axle okay, yep. To suit whatever seat style you have. Brilliant. Also, if you want to change the load direction to come on this way, simply take the wheel loop off that side, put it on this side. And then this is going to go to that side. Oh, okay. So you can load it from whichever direction you choose. Brilliant. We tend to set them up this way because it's the natural way of the, getting on a bike. Yeah, yeah. Cor and, correct, yeah. Yeah, so it's a bit easier to handle yeah. that way. Um, so where this is positioned, as I said, is very important. When you compress it like I'm going to tell you shortly, you want this on the deepest, chunkiest area of the seat with the most padding. Okay. Typical scooter seats tend to be flat at the front and get thinner towards the back. Yeah. If you put this on the back in the thin area and then compress it down with a ratchet, it's going to take all the give out of the uh, out of the seat. Yes. And with a braking motion, it has a possibility of damaging the seat. Okay. So where we want it on a deep area, so we do compress it, there's still that little bit of give in the seat. Okay. So then as it breaks, it shouldn't damage the seat at all. Okay. With that in mind also, we only leave it compressed for a minimal amount of time as possible. You leave the bike on overnight, relax the tension off your ratchet, leave it on the seat to support it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just remember to sign up before and doing before setting off again. Yes. But that way your seat will reshape. Yeah. It will indent your seat originally. Of course it will, yeah. So always relax it when you're not towing. Okay. Basically. So some people also like to get a bit of dense sponge and spread that over the seat. 
although this in a nice area you shouldn't really need it okay but it doesn't hurt any so else. you can do it if you wish yeah if you wish yeah yeah some vespers lambrettas the seats are thin all the way across yeah and i advise it with things like yeah that. yeah yeah not, not much padding yeah but most seats you should be okay okay um don't use towels <laughs> no I've seen people put towels on and it'll just, you'll never stop it moving. No. It needs to be something that has a bit of a grip. Yeah, it? of course, yeah. So once all that's set up then, your loading procedure is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, ramp in place, make sure we're all lined up nice and easy. Your gentle throttle and clutch control of the bike. Bar here, reach over, and that's when you drop into the seat. Freeing up your hands to work your straps. Yes. The first strap you need to use before tensioning this up is the front handlebar strap that comes with the kit. Uh, because it doesn't matter how well you think you've got into that front wheel loop. Yeah. Once you start tensioning the ratchet, it's going to pull it forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this is tight, again, there's a chance that you could damage your seat. Yeah. So, you tension that one up first. Can I use yourself as yeah. a bit of a demonstration? It will compress the forks as well, yeah. when you put it back. Not too much. It, no, but it does. It, it yeah. does, but you don't want to go mad with them oh, and no. compress them too much. Well, you don't want them under load all the while. Yeah. Exactly. But the traditional straps that you buy online, handlebar grips, these two connect by a strap in the middle and the cross. And what happens is you, if you tension them, they put in, and they damage your switches and things on your handlebar. Oh, I see, got you. So we've come up with this idea, which seems to be working very well. If I could just ask you to hold them at a sort of handlebar width there, so they simply go into your grips. Yeah. This strap here, the sole purpose of that strap is to yep. stop them coming off the handlebar. Okay. It's adjustable up and down, no, keep it wide on, please. Adjustable up and down. Yeah. To miss plastic, so it's not chaffing on paintwork. Oh, okay, yeah. Etc. Yeah. It's adjustable with a cam buckle to pull in or pull out, depending on the handlebar width. But if you hold that firm there, what I'm wanting is this sort of shape. Oh, I see, yeah. So it comes in and then back out again. Yep. And that then stops them falling off. Yep. But it's not putting pressure on any of your switches. Yep. Understand. Another job. So once you set them, you kind of know where you're going with your particular bike. Yep. The big, big handle latches and big snap hooks. Um, does it go with that strap and hook it to this point here and another hooking point there? Yep. You'll notice you've got a hooking points at the other side. Uh, yeah, that's just, just in case you do it the other way around, yeah. Exactly that. Yep. You don't need to add, you can add a strap, but it can be more problematic, which I'll go into in a second. Okay. If you do, and it's perfect with the handlebar and this. Yeah, that's all you need, you're saying? That's all you need. Okay. Yeah. This does all the work. With a handlebar strap on a forward facing trailer. Yeah. Uh, it keeps the bike stable. Yeah. But when it's sideways, the forces are slightly different. Oh, okay. So the only main reason I use the handlebar strap in this case is so it keeps the straps wide and not touching paintwork. Yeah, yeah. And all that front strap is doing is stopping this moving and obviously it damaging the seat on the Oh, end. I see, yeah. But this does all the keeping it upright. Upright, yeah. So, once we pull into that front wheel holder, we're going to come back to the seat pad. Now, the problem with the latching straps and suspension on motorbikes is they travel quite a long way. You can soon fill up the barrel on the ratchet and it stops pulling when we need it to pull a bit more. Yeah. So, what we do with this first is we compress this by hand as much as we can. Yeah. If there's two of you, someone pulling on the back end a little bit is a bit of assistance. Yeah. Once you compress it by hand once, we're then going to put the ratchet strap into this check loop here on the sliding bracket. The loose end here tips into the link just below. Yeah. We're going to feed the strap into the ratchet. Yeah. I'm going to put some tension on it before releasing that a second time. So all the hard work you've done by hand doesn't pop back up again. Ah, uh, of course, yeah. And then we're going to use the ratchet to compress the bike down more than the human body could physically compress. Okay. So. We tighten that up until you feel some it's tight. tension on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to go too crazy, no. but a, bit, uh, a nice bit of tension on there, and then just give your bike a shake and make sure it's nice and firm. Yeah. It's going nowhere before That's, it's set up. Yeah, yeah. So, hand once, ratchet once only. Yeah. It usually gives you the perfect tension 
So it's still leaving a bit of give in the suspension. Yeah. But not enough give if you hit a bottle to jump out of this hoop. Got ya, got ya. With this in mind, this is no given shape as such. It can be manipulated in a vice. Okay. And this can be made more acute and angle if need be. Yeah. We just watch out for any rubber touching paintwork again. Hey. The whole idea of this strapping system is to keep the straps away from paintwork. Yeah. Make it easy to load. Yeah. Um, and you're not damaging paintwork with straps blowing in the wind. Yeah. Center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that should all down nice and secure. Is there any questions on that? No, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what you've told me so far. Absolutely fine, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. At the other day, it's tried tested. I've been using this seat clamping system on our carriers for 28 years now. Yeah. I've had three damaged seats out of literally thousands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they didn't listen to the demo properly and put it off in areas of the seat. Yeah, time. well, uh, Wayne, I've filmed it, so I've got no excuse. <laughs> 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 well, they work great when used properly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, from a personal point of view, Wayne, I mean, I, I, I've seen a couple of these uh, straight away. It just looks like a quality piece of kit, doesn't it, mate? It really does look well made, honestly. Right, There's things on there that I'm looking at. Uh, like for instance, I I've never seen her with the front lights there. You've, obviously, it's been developed over the years, and you've just kept uh, changing. Keep you've you've got some. Of, bit like the yeah. 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 You've got some of that works. The and the, it's even like all the wiring. You'll notice runs through all the tubing. Yeah. So it's all protected and comes out of the end of the tubing. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's got the yeah. You know? yeah. It's so, proper, mate. It's proper. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it, mate. And and you you are just slightly more expensive than the cheaper ones, but you can see why. Honestly, you can. And I don't think you get the straps and other. No, no, I'm I'm shocked, mate. Like I've made the right decision, pal. Honestly, fantastic. Which way? Which way? Yeah. So we'll put it onto your tow bar. Yeah, yeah. We'll go the proper route on how to hitch up a trailer. That's it. Yeah, because uh, we all need to know these things. Hold it above the ball, of course, and then simply lower it down. And then the handle should go down. That goes back over, knowing yeah. you're locked on properly. Yeah. Now, unbrake trailers have a second recoupling by law, which is yeah. this. It's not a breakaway cable like you get on a brake trailer. Yeah. Which normally goes into a breakaway point on the tow bar. In these cases, again, second recoupling just goes around the ball. Yeah. Comes, comes back onto, onto itself. itself. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea behind the wire rope is if you don't put the hitch on properly yeah. and you tow away and it comes off, yeah. the wire rope is meant to stop the drawbar hitting the ground. Yeah. Creating a sort of flip yeah. of the trailer. Okay, yeah. So and plus it keeps it out to the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Electrics. Make sure we've got a bit of turning slack in it, but we're not dangling near the floor, of course. Yeah, so yeah. I like to bring it over the drawbar or around the ball, whichever the case may be. Yeah. And we simply plug those in. And uh, you did say, or somebody said, I don't know who it was I spoke to, Wayne, in the office, said that um, if you haven't got the right uh, connector, you, do, you, you supply adapters. It's adapted, yeah. yeah. Most common socket these days is a 13 pin. Yeah. And you've got a 7 pin. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But there's adapters that are about £8.50. Yeah, yeah. It goes into the 13 pin. Yeah. It turns into yeah. the 7. Some people don't know that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every wiring job we've done for the last six years now, we always wire 13 pin. And we always give you a 13 7 pin adapter. Ah, uh, okay. You've got best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, smashing. Now, one of the biggest selling trailer components is jockey wheels. Yeah. Basically, for people being a little bit lazy sometimes and not following the correct procedure. Okay. And uh, they get to the destination and there's no jockey wheel. Oh, shit. So, in this case, there's two outer slots in the outer tube. Yep. They're designed to wind the arms that hold the wheel into to stop it rotating. You can just see the slots there. Yep. So the first thing we need to do is wind the arms into those two slots. Yep. Once located into the two slots, which yep. is going to stop the wheel rotating. Yep. We also need to tap the handle round, which is what a lot of people forget. Because we don't oh, want, okay. with vibration, that to be spinning round, as you can see, the wheel will lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so give careful. it a little knock. Yeah, be careful not to bust the roll pin and give it a bit of a tap round, yeah. locking it in. Yeah. And then, only then, do we lift it up out of the way. Gotcha. As high as it will go. And again, be as brutal as you can with the clamp. Give it a tap, make sure it's nice and tight, it's not going to vibrate down. 
follow that procedure every time with any trailer and you shouldn't lose your jockey wheel. Fantastic, that's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. Um, so we're all ready to go now. The only thing we need to do is put in your number plate. Yeah, click so, it in. You've, you've already supplied um, a little holder there for the number plate. Yeah. Uh, we put them on all those trailers so you can interchange plates quite easily. Yeah. So how we do this is we simply pop off the bottom trim, get your number plate, we tuck it into one side, flex it, tuck it into the next side, and then we need to lift it into the top lip, providing those sticky back on the backs they are quite a tight fit. Yeah. As this seems to be. It's going now. I can see it's going in. Yeah. There's two little markers that say 110. There. Yeah. And there. Yeah. We need to sit the plate on top of those markers. Gotcha. So it holds it up so we can get the trim back in. Yeah. The flange goes in, making sure the gap is closed. Yeah. Bend it to get it in this side again, making sure the gap is closed. Yeah. And then push. Go and simply then snap it shut. So we can swap plates around proper job as you need proper job i think so there you go Thanks so you. so guys just just uh if you need there's telephone numbers all over the place here look <laughs> I've, I've took some footage of this as well look so if you if you want a trailer and you want a good trailer get in touch with wayne he's the man thank you thanks very much wayne it's a pleasure Have good lad day. thank you thanks